We are good to go. Awesome. Can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, give me a big thumbs up. Awesome. I see some thumbs. That means someone can hear me. <laughs> cool. Everybody, welcome. I'm super excited to do this drawing class together. I draw all the time, and I think it's really fun when people get to draw together. So this is kind of like a really big together because there's a lot of us in here. I'm going to try and share my screen real quick, everybody, so that I can show you my drawing surface, and then we'll see how it goes from there. All right. If you can see my shared screen, it should look like um, a drawing application with a picture of Pikachu on it somewhere. If you can see it, let me know in the chat or give me a thumbs up in your video. Awesome. So far, so good. Thank you guys for the feedback. Yay. All righty, everybody. So again, welcome to our How to Draw Anime class, but this one is going to be Halloween edition. We're going to be talking about the basics of what it is to draw in the anime style, something that I am super excited about. And um, then we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of Halloween motif, add some themes in there, draw some cool stuff to uh, push our drawings into the spooky season, one of my favorite times of the year. A little bit more about me, everybody. My name is Mr. Abe, most of the time, because I'm a teacher. I'm also a graphic designer and an artist, so I do art in all kinds of different ways. Um, right now, my big projects are that I'm painting some murals on electrical boxes in my town of Antioch. Some of you, I know that there's a lot of those paintings around um, the Bay Area, so me getting to do one has been super, super fun. And whenever I'm not painting outside, I get to draw um, with people of all ages. And I actually have an after school anime drawing class that I do a couple of times a week. So I've got a lot of practice drawing anime. <laughs> Anybody out there practice drawing anime before? Nice. I see some hands. I see some nods. I see some heck yeahs. And a lot of people in the chat. Ooh. <laughs> so you guys might already have a little bit of experience here. And that's awesome whether you practice all the time or whether you just practice occasionally and you just really like anime, um, this is gonna be great for you. So this is gonna be something that anyone of any level can join in on. We're gonna start with some basics on how to make our characters look um, like they're drawn in the anime style. And then we're gonna uh, do some more specific stuff as we go along. The other thing, apart from having a lot of drawing experience that makes me um, authorized to teach an anime drawing class is that I'm a big old nerd. And I like reading a whole bunch of books. I've got a whole bunch of shows that I like to watch. I play a bunch of video games. Uh, like, so if you're, if you're into something, we probably have something in common at this point with all the different things that I've gotten into. Um, our class is gonna go pretty simple. Up here on the screen that you see here, I'm gonna be drawing um, and having a kind of follow along tutorial where we'll get to draw together. You'll try your best to draw in the style that I'm going in, but if you have something that works in your own personal style that you'd like to try, go ahead and go for that too. Uh, to start with for today, I really wanna go over what it is to draw in the anime style. Anime style, everybody, has a really particular look, as you can see from some of the characters that I put up on the screen right here. No the style. <laughs> the style comes um, from Japan, as some of you probably know. And even if a character um, is unfamiliar to you, you can spot an anime character from a mile away. Um, it's something about the way that they draw um, the hairstyles being kind of like long and pokey, eyes being a little bit exaggerated and bigger, and a lot of features being a bit sharp. Another thing that's fun about anime too is that characters can look all kinds of different ways from different hair colors, different eye shapes, different skin colors, and even different species. So there's a lot of wiggle room in anime for you to find a character that you really like. And I think that also lends itself to being super festive and having all kinds of fun things that you can draw um, for this time of the year when people are getting dressed up in all kinds of ways. So let's get started by drawing um, a basic anime style head. We're gonna work on drawing um, the eyes. We're gonna block in how to, draw, um, how to draw in a simple nose and a mouth. And then after that, we'll dress up that simple head to be all kinds of different styles. 
if at any point during our tutorial I'm going a little bit um, I'm going a little fast I'm going to try my best to um, keep it at an even pace but um, you can let us know in the chat if I'm going a bit fast. <laughs> awesome chat. I see some of you are familiar with the k -On characters I had up a second ago. But yeah, I'll try my best to um, have things be at a nice even pace. If I go a little faster, we need something repeated. You can let us know. Um, and I'll always try to double back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> peeking at my layers. I'll show you some of my other drawings as we go along. All righty. So everybody, for today, the basics that you're going to need for um, our drawing is going to be some paper of any kind. It can be some lined paper. Um, it can be a drawing notebook, if any of you have some of that stuff. I personally really love drawing on printer paper. I think it's just the best um, and so ready for any kind of drawing on it. But any kind of paper that you got around is going to be awesome. You're also going to need something to draw with. I'm going to say pencil, but if you're like a super pro and you love drawing in pen, if you like going straight in with color, if you've got like a fresh box of crayons out there, use that. Use whatever you have around you um, to do your drawing. And if bonus, if you happen to have any kind of colors around uh, your desk area, you can use those after we've drawn together to decorate your drawing. Uh, Mr. Nice. Abe, we already have one question. Um, Ooh, which is which you. program you're using right now to draw in. Yeah, thank you for the question. I'm actually using Photoshop. I'm on my laptop right now and I'm able to project the program on there. And with Photoshop, I'm using a stylus pen and what we call a graphics tablet, this like huge mouse pad thing um, that I used to draw on. It's kind of like if I was drawing on an iPad, like with an Apple pencil, but a little different. Thanks for the question. Let's see. So I'll give you guys a chance to grab um, any supplies that you've got around. And then we will get going. Ooh, I see some people holding up their cool pen sets. Anybody have a favorite pencil? I just lost mine, so I'm like a little bummed, but ooh, nice. Neat. All right, so it looks like a lot of us have our supplies. If you're still rushing around trying to find them, it's okay. I'm gonna try to take this first part real slow so that we can get started together um, and then we can hang in there. <laughs> Shout out to the Kakashi pencil, that's awesome. All right. So first step is we're gonna be working on drawing a face. Um, some of us might have a lot of experience drawing characters like full body, running around, jumping. Others of us maybe are like big on drawing eyeballs on the corner of our homework. And whichever way you're at, cool. We're gonna focus on just the upper body of our character, maybe the shoulders and stuff, but mostly the head for today. Um, Cause I think those in, uh, drawing a face is something that a lot of us um, aspire to do well. And having a little bit of help with that, I think can be, um, a good idea. So first, let's start by number one, blocking in how big our head is going to be on the screen. I like to block in just like a nice big oval um, somewhere on there so that I know how much space we're working with. I'm also using technology so I can kind of cheat and like shrink or make the head a little bit bigger as I go along. But go ahead and just start off with an oval. It's okay if it's a little lumpy or bumpy. If you're like, wow, Mr. Abe, this could never be an anime head. That looks like a straight up potato. Like, that's okay. We're gonna shape it to not look like a potato, I promise. I'm gonna try to darken it in a little bit. There we go. Some of us might take a little bit of time to block in the perfect ovally potato thumbprint to draw your anime head in. As long as you've got the size of what your face is going to look like in there, we're gonna go back and kind of edit the sides to make it look a little bit more like the pointy anime chins that we know. Ooh, I see a question from Kylie. Are we gonna show any of our art within this lesson? I would love to see your guys' art as we go along. So I'll give you guys chances as we go. If you're like drawing something and you just wanna hold it up to the camera for anybody who happens to be looking, you can go for it. <laughs> nice. 
I saw some pretty cool PFPs when we logged in. Ooh. I think, is, there, is your name pronounced Moria? I really like your drawing so far. <laughs> All right. So we've got the very beginnings of our anime head, just a simple potato. And we're going to start blocking in how to draw the features on the face. The features on the face, everybody, are the eyes, the nose, the mouth, um, and we'll include the ears in this part of our drawing too. Uh, sometimes when we start blocking in a face, like we kind of like don't really know where to get started, even though we have the oval in here, it still has kind of like that blank canvas syndrome where we're like, I don't know where to draw the things. And then you get something that looks kind of funky. Happens to us all the time, no matter how much experience you got. So I found a little trick that really helps me make sure that I get the eyes and everything else feeling nice and balanced on the face. So first, we're going to create a little road map on this face by drawing a line going right down the middle, as close as you can to the middle. And then we're going to draw another one horizontally across the middle too, dividing this oval into four equal parts as equal as you can get them. Again, if your oval came out lumpy bumpy and you'll fix it later, and that's okay. As long as you know where this um, uh, cross is, you'll be a-okay. If you were able to draw a potato and cut it into four slices, give me a thumbs up in your camera. Nice. And for those of you who don't have your camera, you can always say yay or something in the chat. Nice. Thumbs up responses are awesome. Ooh, June, I like that oval that you drew. It's a nice round one. Cool, thank you. All righty. Ooh, Maddie, a perfect potato. We love that. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Arcadia. That looks great. All right, if you're feeling pretty solid about your, um, your shape so far, cool. And if you're still like, ooh, I would love to work on this more, again, you're gonna get time as we go. Now, these four lines are gonna be kind of like a little roadmap where we're going to use them to help us place the features down. The first feature that I love to place down, no matter what kind of drawing I'm doing, um, is the eyes after I block in the size of the face. Now, we all know that anime eyes have that special style and there's really just so many different ways that you can draw an anime eye. Like it depends on the character that you like, it depends on the show that they're in, there's lots of styles. So there's no wrong way to do it here today. I'll show you my basic way of drawing them, um, but we're just gonna start blocking in the general size and placement. So everybody, this line right here in the middle is the one that we're going to use to ground where our eyes are going to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just block in the outside shape of where my eyes are going to be. I like to make mine kind of an oval shape, kind of like an almond. Maybe it's an egg, a lot of food when we're talking about anime today. But I want you to block in two eye shapes that are resting on this line and try to make them as close as you can to each other's size and shape. They don't have to be exactly perfect, but it's nice having this line drawn here because I can see how much space there is between this space and this space and this space and this space. And if it looks like it's like crazy off, the nice thing about our drawing right now is that we just got started. So you can go in and erase a part to fix it a little bit. Maybe you're like, Mr. A, my eyes are perfect. The size came out, A1, cool. You can work on erasing the lines that you have in there to give yourself some blank space for the next step of the eyes. <laughs> the character, oh, I think I saw just a question right now. Cool. Are we drawing a boy or a girl? We're going to draw just kind of a neutral face and you can push this face to be whatever gender representation you would like. You can make this a kitty if you wanted to in the end. Or we're gonna block in just some eyes and you can choose the gender that you draw your character. Yeah, kitty, what, you think I'm kidding? Look, boom, boom, meow. <laughs> I think I'd draw some fur on it, you know, make it a little fluffier. Cat potato, maybe not, maybe not the species I wanna draw today. <laughs> All right, we've got two eye 
size is blocked in, the general shape of like the outside of our eyes, but we're missing the little bubble on the inside. The little bubble on the inside, everybody, is called the iris. And that's the part of your eye that can be brown, blue, uh, minor, like essentially black, green. And in anime, they can be yellow, pink, purple, red. Shout out to Sasuke. There's a lot of different colors that they can be in anime and also different sizes. In real life, your iris is usually just a circle. But in anime, we can stretch that shape to be a little bit more fitting to the eye shape that we drew. So I want you now to block in two different shapes for your irises. I'm gonna do ovals for mine because I think that it fills the space of this kind of like big eye shape that I made. And a lot of anime eyes tend to have oval shaped ones. Yeah, Simone uh, asks, can we draw whatever eye shape we want? Totally. I'm gonna do just kind of like a general, like main character vibe eye over here, not too evil, not too cute. But if you wanna draw like a super vicious, like cool character, you can do that today by making it a triangle shape. If you're like, no, Mr. Abe, everything must be adorable, kawaii forever, then you can make yours like super huge um, and glittery as we go along. Right now, we're just blocking in the outside shape of our eye and also the inside iris. Now, right now, our anime character looks like a soulless being, which kind of fits the whole Halloween thing. But we are going to go back and add some more style to the eyes. But before we do and you know, spend like five hours drawing eyes, which happens to me all the time, we're going to skip ahead and we're going to block in the nose and the mouth, which are pretty quick features to block in for anime. If you remember our example from before, of the different faces that, are, um, that we were looking at. Anime noses and mouths don't always have a whole bunch of detail. It really depends on the show. Um, like I recall Your Lion April, which is a pretty big Netflix one, um, has like uh, really nice details on the nostrils and the mouth. Um, but in general, anime doesn't pay too much attention to those. So when we draw ours, we're gonna keep them simple. I'll just show you where to put them. Because if you draw your nose too low and your mouth too high, you can get some pretty creepy faces, which maybe that's what you're going for today. <laughs> but, but if we want to make a nice balanced face, we're actually going to draw the nose halfway between the intersection of the eyes, which we had up here, that little eye line, and halfway between that and the chin. So like maybe around there, I'm going to draw a line halfway between that point and that point that goes all the way across to one side and all the way across to the other. Again, about half. I like that we have some shout outs to our favorite characters over here in the chat, but let's also make sure that we're being super kind to everybody in there. If someone has a character that they really like and you're like, nah, man, that's not the simp, that's okay. There's characters for everybody out there, but you don't want to yuck anybody's yum. And let's make sure that we're making a nice friendly environment for everybody. All right, so we drew this little halfway line right here. That's not where the nose is going to sit because that's still very long and makes your character look either very mature or like a different cartoon style. We're gonna have this line be the very bottom part of where our nose would be. Anime noses tend to look like little carrots, little triangles. I remember in the Pokemon anime, a lot of the time Ash's nose was just the shadow of his nose like this. Again, your lion April likes to actually draw the noses out. So you'll get like little nostrils and the side parts, maybe like the little bumpy thing, but that's doing a lot. <laughs> if you're a nose drawn master, please draw the best nose that you got. If you're like, mm, noses are weird, just draw a little boop and you got yourself an anime nose. Now, for the mouth, everybody, we're going to block in the mouth about halfway between where we drew the nose and where we drew the chin. But just about. It really depends on the kind of expression that your anime character is going to have. If it's just like a simple smile, halfway between the nose and the chin works really well. 
If your character is like super smiling, you probably want to draw it a little bit higher, maybe even tilt it. If your character is like kind of bummed out at the moment, like you can even make it a little lower, make a look at their pouting. Whatever kind of mouth works out for the character you have in mind today, cool. If you change the attitude of that character as we go along, a mouth is usually just a nice simple line that you can erase later. If your character has um, defined lips, then you can add just a couple of simple lines to make that happen. I like to make my mouth sometimes as two separate lines. Makes it look a little more relaxed, maybe even a little cuter. And then just a little line on the bottom for where the lip is going to be. Maybe your character is like going out on the town and they've got makeup on. You can outline the lip if you need to. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as a simple little line. Mia, we are getting to the island, trust me. Right now, this character is not ready to go anywhere. <laughs> They're still a potato. But now that we've drawn the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, we can move on to shaping the sides of the face to be a little bit more like our anime example from earlier. Again, a lot of anime characters tend to have kind of pointed chins and very sharp features, which is kind of how the style has evolved over the years. So. We're going to shape this potato to be a little bit more anime facey by starting where the eye line is. We're going to take that eye line, or at least where we start from the eye line, and we're going to shape the edges of the face by making it more swoopy, maybe even adding a little bit more chin over there, and then erasing the parts that are a little bit rounder at the bottom. If you don't have an eraser that works like super well, or you're a person who draws really, really hard on your paper, um, don't worry about getting everything to erase fully. You can always go and cover some things with color, or this could be your like beginning sketch for a drawing that you do later. Whoa, Kylie, I like that sketch. I really like the style that you have with your lines. Ooh, I see Mia went for the eyeliner. <laughs> All right. Currently, I do have a very big forehead. Yazini, I like that face so far. I think that's going to look really cool when we add more style to the eyes. Nice. <laughs> Sophie, I like that image you've got on there. I thought it was a giant cookie for a minute. All right, everyone. So as you can see, I kind of took the sides that we were drawing before and just shaped them a little bit more to something that feels um, a bit more like a face, a little less like just a round blob. You can choose to make the chin very pointy. Sometimes a little bit of a rounded chin can make for a more friendly, younger looking character. Hmm, I kind of like that actually, that works. <laughs> All right, we've got the eyes, the nose, the mouth. We fix the chin a little bit. Let's add some ears super fast. So everybody, ears, don't always think about drawing those, especially when we have anime people who like probably have like super cool hair that covers their ears all the time. But ears matter for those characters that do show them. And we don't always just want to <laughs> draw a little monkey ear on the side. This kind of looks like, I don't know, <laughs> it doesn't quite look like an ear to me. It looks more like, like a big pimple. So we're going to add the ear on here. And it's going to fit about the same way that our own ears fit on our face. The way that I always start my ears is knowing where the top of it is. And our ears are at about the same level as your eye is. So if you put one finger very carefully here at the edge of your eye and you turn your head to the side, the very top part of your ear is going to be at level with that. 
So we're going to start our ear at the eye line as well. The eye line is a super useful line to have when you're drawing shapes. So I'm going to draw the top part of my ear there. And your ear normally ends at about where your nose ends too. So the eye line and the ear line can be a really nice little roadmap for how big to make your ears. If your character has average sized ears or human sized ears, if your character today is more of an elf, their ear starts and ends in the same place, but it will go up higher and then come down. Yeah, Maddie, make an elf. They're awesome. You don't really have to worry about the details of the ears too much for anime. What about an animal? Ooh, good question. If we have an animal ear that we're putting on, uh, on our person's head, we can attach those higher up, depending on the ear. Like here we have like a nice big cat ear. Maybe you have like some kind of cool like fish person. <laughs> some dragon fins on the side. You can definitely adjust it the more fantastic you get. And we're gonna go into drawing some of those um, head accessories as we go on. So if there's something that you're like really itching to learn some style points on, we're gonna get to them. <laughs> nice. All righty. Now that we've got like a basic head drawn in here, we can start adding just a little bit of style to start tweaking it from being this kind of like no thoughts, vacant expression that we have going on. You don't have to erase all the lines on your drawing as we go. I'll give you time to do that after we kind of cool off from following these directions. Which happens to be very easy for me as I have the power of technology here. But let's go back to our vacant eyes and add a little bit more of that anime style to them. <laughs> All right, so right now we just have some simple outlined eyes, nothing too much going on with them. But if we look at our inspiration faces from before, well, really up close to this one. <laughs> if we look at our inspiration faces from before, yeah, anime eyes are bigger than the usual caricature of um, an eye drawing, but, they also have a couple of things in common with each other across all of these shapes. One of the things that I always really love about the anime style is that um, something as simple as darkening a line can really bring out um, some style and personality in a character. And the upper eye line, which this little like, I don't know if you can see my cursor very well, but the upper eye line on these characters is normally very dark. And sometimes they add a little bit of a hook or wing to the end of those eye shapes. So we're gonna start off our um, eye shape journey here by going in and darkening that top eye line in the style that we like. Sometimes merely adding just like a dark line on the top can already start to make this look a bit more stylish, but you don't have to just follow the shape that you started from before. Another fun way to add some style to your anime eye is to make the eye line on the upper lid its own shape like I'm doing here. Like maybe your person has um, kind of like some wingtip eyelash shape like this. This isn't exclusive to a character that's wearing makeup either. Oftentimes characters with very sharp kind of like, I'd say like aggressive personalities will also have these kind of like interesting little shapes on the upper lids. And oftentimes taking away from the other shapes that we see here, like making the bottom lid a little bit thinner. I'm just gonna kind of shape this side. I'm gonna darken in this one and give it a little bit of a corner and then leave just a little bit of one under there. And I'm gonna go over and try and repeat that on the other side. A big tip that I have for you all on drawing eyes and getting two eyes that look similar to each other is to do each step as you go and don't finish one eye and then move on to the other. It's much harder to recreate an entire sketch than it is to just sketch both of them together as you go. Like if you just drew the iris in one eye, 
draw the iris in the other. If you just darkened in the eye line on one eye, darken it in on the other eye as well. That way, if one piece seems a little bit off, you can fix it before you move on and do a lot of work on your eye and end up having to uh, restart more than, more than you'd like. And because it's Halloween today, if all else fails and you don't like your eye shape, put an eye patch on. Let's see, I'm just thinning my lines a little bit while I let you guys draw the shapes that you like. <laughs> I like these eyes so far. I think that they're looking pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So now that we've blocked in and added a little bit of style to our upper eyelid, we're going to go in and add the next feature to our anime eye. We've already drawn the iris in here, but it's time to bring that character's eye to life a little bit. And before we go in and draw anything on the inside of the eye, we're going to think about the surface of the eye. If you look at our inspiration again, she's going to be super up close to this grumpy person in the back. You'll notice that um, the character has this little white spot in the corner of their eye. Everybody, that's a reflection. And a lot of anime eye styles out there will have a reflection in their eye somewhere. And it's just to show that there's lighting in the room and then it's bouncing off of the shiny surface of the eye. But in anime, this is something that you can use to add to the style of the eye that you've got. So I'm just gonna go in and draw an oval in the corner of the eye to show where the sparkle is, where that shines. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sophie, I agree. Not having the eyebrows in yet, it's not the greatest look, but we'll get there. We'll give this character some eyebrows. After you've drawn one eye sparkle in the eye, when you go to the other eye to draw it in, re resist the urge to reflect it onto the other side. It makes your character look like they're not focused. <laughs> but if you draw it on the same hand side that you drew the eye in, it shows that that character is awake and active. Not having the eye sparkle in an anime character's eye usually lets us know that they're um, maybe unconscious, that they're under a spell and they're being like uh, brainwashed, that they are just currently not, not ready for action. But the eye sparkle lets us know that they're ready to go. Sometimes anime characters have multiple sparkles in their eyes in multiple shapes. Like a popular one is to have the lower sparkle that's a bit of an oval. That too, Elizabeth. <laughs> and depending on um, the character style, you might have a couple more sparkles in there. The secret to the eye sparkles and what they can mean for a character is that the more eye sparkles a character tends to have, the more reflections are in the eye. Ooh, nice, Ellie. <laughs> is the more emotions that character has. So if I were to just have these two sparkles, they're probably just like, you know, having a good day, going around. But if you add a couple more, that's this character like, oh my gosh, look at that thing I'm looking at or whatever it is. I don't know. Whatever would get this character excited. Maybe they just got their first king size candy bar of Halloween night. Maybe they just saw their best friend in their super cool costume. Whatever it is, you can add those sparkles onto that eye and make them more excited. The sparkles also can mean that they're very upset, like they're about to cry. Or maybe they're like really angry and they're just like, ah, ready to you know, do whatever they do. The eye sparkles are all up to you. I'm gonna stick with these two for now. I've also seen some eye sparkles take different shapes, which I think can be cool. Sometimes they're little hearts. They're trying to be really cute. I saw one character who actually, I think Tanjiro from Demon Slayer has his as like, just like little, like little diamonds in his eyes. Everyone in Demon Slayer has like a totally different eye style, which I think is pretty cool. But I'll stick to those. 
Once your eye has enough reflections in them, everybody, we're gonna move on to draw the very center of the eye, which is the pupil. The pupil is that little tiny dot that you have in the very center, which you can have as just a dot. But in anime, because we're already playing with the shapes and forms that we're working with, you can change them up. I like to make mine ovals to match the shape of the iris that I drew. Kind of like if we just like stretched out that feature. But because this is a Halloween drawing class, we can push that to be whatever works for that character. Like maybe they're, um, you know, kind of going along with the kitty from earlier. Maybe this character, it has like some feline in them. So we can make that iris a little longer shaped. Or, has anyone ever seen the like costume contact lenses that people wear where they're like different shapes or different colors? Yeah, those are awesome. I see a lot of head knots out there. You can totally change the middle to be anything else. Like maybe the pupil is a heart. That's actually super cute. Somebody talked about pumpkin eyes. And at least for me, sometimes like the classic triangle like cut out for a pumpkin is kind of cool. I've seen Naruto show up in a couple different arts where his pupil elongates and gets longer, kind of like a frog. You can make this any shape you like. I think experimenting it, we can find out something really cool or something really creepy. And because it's Halloween, creepy is A-OK. -okay. After you've got the pupil blocked in there, we can go ahead and add a little bit of shading to the eyes. Now, some of you might hear that word and be like, oh, shading, Mr. Abe, I thought this was an anime class. That's like real drawing stuff. Well, anime doesn't always use a lot of crazy techniques, but just a little bit of shading can help the eyes at least shine a little bit more, which is one of the biggest things people focus on. Shading for the eyes in anime can look like blocking in the top half of the eye, like so, or you can just sketch a little bit at the top to really bring out that eye reflection and add some depth to the eye. Once you're happy with the general shape and style of your eyes, you can go and clear up some of the other areas around the face if you want to. Sometimes if I'm sketching, I'll leave all of the lines that are on there just so people can see that I worked at building up the face or to help me later if I wanna redraw that face. And as you wait for us to all kind of catch up and be at a similar place, you can also add some eyebrows. <laughs> Not all characters have eyebrows, but eyebrows are another shape that you can play with a lot too. Like, yeah, you can have just a line that goes over the eyes. That works for most characters for sure. Or you can play with the shape and adding a little bit of thickness to it. Like making them this kind of like elongated triangle shape by drawing the bottom line first and then drawing the two little tent lines on the top. That's looking pretty cool. Some characters play with the shape of the eyebrows. Like maybe they have little caterpillar eyebrows. Maybe they have like really furry eyebrows. <laughs> Do the eyebrows that you need. Maybe not the curly eyebrow, not for this one. <laughs> but I think an eyebrow adds a lot of character to the face, a lot of personality. 
So if you ever look at a face and feel like you forgot something, nine times out of 10, it's usually the eyebrows. I'm totally guilty of this myself. I'm going to give us like 30 more seconds to get to a good stopping point on drawing kind of the general face expression, the eye style. And we're going to get into drawing some hair on this person if you want to. If you want to leave it as one punch man, you totally can. But a lot of us aspire to draw hair on our characters. <laughs> so I will give you some basic tips. I will let you choose the hairstyle that you draw. And then after we draw the hairstyle, we're going to sneak in drawing just a couple of cool features that could Halloween up the drawing that you've got so far. <laughs> yes, Mia, embrace the uneven eyebrows. Eyebrows are often sisters and not twins, I have heard. So if one eyebrow is a little off than the other, that's just natural. I'm going to keep my hairstyle super simple, you guys, because I actually want to show you more than just putting some hair on this head. I want to get into drawing some wings. I want to draw some horns, some cool ears, you know, all the things that you would dress up a head for, for a costume. So when we draw hair, everybody, these are like just my big basics. Hair is often, you know, flowy, long, has a lot of motion and ways to express itself. Um, and especially in anime, hair like doesn't even follow the laws of gravity. So you can do whatever inspires you for hair. There's no limits there. But if you want hair to feel like hair and not just feel like little noodles sticking off of the head, or worse, that your character has sweaty head syndrome. You can follow just these two basic tips. First, when you're drawing hair, if your sketch style is normally to like do a lot of small lines to build up a longer shape like I just did here. That is totally cool for building up other features. I think that's really helpful. But when you're drawing hair, you're gonna wanna go for long lines. Even if your hair has a lot of texture to it, you wanna go for slashes and swoops over small sketchy lines like this. Another thing, when you draw hair, everybody, you always wanna start by drawing the hair that hangs out in front of the face, hair that frames the face. Oftentimes, anime characters will have spiky bangs that are kind of like hanging out around their face. I like to draw those first. I just kind of block some in there. I think I'm gonna keep them just a little simpler for myself, but you can go ahead and put a couple of pieces of hair as nice big shapes hanging out in front of the face. Again, we're going for long swoopy lines, kind of going all over the place, but really use those swoopy lines to block in what the shape of the hair is and not draw every single hair, unless you like, you know, really want to draw all the hair. My next tip for drawing hair, everybody, I know some of you are probably still working on it. Hair is another one of those things that you can draw for a very long time. But if you're ready to start blocking in the hair that hangs out on the rest of the head, I want you to try this. Hair definitely grows right out of the scalp or the surface of the head like this, right? But when we're drawing hair, you want to pay more attention to the total shape and volume that hair has. Volume isn't how loud hair is, but it's how poofy it is, it's how much space it takes up. So instead of drawing the hair coming out of the skull or the scalp, draw it starting away from the scalp like this. Notice how much fluffier the hair looks if I give it space away from the head. If I were to try that hairstyle, but like attached to the head, it would have a much different look. 
just kind of looks like you got a lot of hair gel or maybe some spikes. I'm gonna go for just kind of like a short spiky hairstyle. If you wanna add long hair to your character, that sounds cool, but I'm gonna keep mine kind of just messy and simple. When you have some swoopy hair that you like, My next tip is going to be to go back and just erase any of the sections that you don't need anymore that are covered up by the hair. Like for me, I don't really need the head shape hanging out back here. So I'm gonna erase a lot of that. Sometimes people like erasing the hair or the eyebrows or parts of the eye that get covered up by the bangs like this. But you can also totally let your eyebrows shine through. If in drawing the hair, you're like, hey, hey, now's my chance to cover up that eye I messed up. That's also okay. Now that I look at this character, I kind of want to give them bigger eyebrows. Just cuz. I feel like a lot of the times when we draw characters, we're kind of inventing them as we go. And that's really, really, really fun. Some of us have a vision of what our character is going to look like right away. Others of us need to work on it a little bit more. <laughs> Some of you maybe like went to town and drew five bajillion spikes of hair. Others of you maybe kept it nice and simple. All righty. Now that we've got like a basic head set up, Let's look on adding a couple of things that could really pump up the style of this to be more in the season of Halloween. I'm going to, I'll keep it this size for now. But I think that adding a couple of accessories to this head could work out really well in giving them just a little bit more costume personality. We talked about adding animal ears earlier. And I think that that's something that you see a lot during um, the Halloween season and especially in anime. Lots of kitty eared people. I've seen some uh, really neat designs with like rabbit ears, fox ears, all kinds of species out there. Now, when we add them, sometimes we can place them where these ears are or other times they're just like a headband decoration. I like to place mine not behind the hair, although that looks okay. But I like to imagine that there's like this little headband that's placed on the head somewhere between the bangs and where the back kind of like shape of the head is. And I'll make the ears sprout out from there. If it was like a plastic headband that this character was wearing, we could draw them as just triangles. And I think that that would look pretty cool. If our ears are a little bit more natural or we just wanna draw them bigger, we can draw as one curved line coming out from the top and then another curved line coming down and meeting the head somewhere over here on the side. Again, pretending that we have like this little invisible headband that goes through there. I'm gonna erase 
the lines that we have here. And then I'm gonna add a line to the inside of the ear. Sometimes we think of ears as being a color on the outside and then like a little, rect a little triangle on the inside. And that looks pretty good to start. But I think we can make it a little more stylish. I'm gonna start by doing the curved inner part of the inside of the ear, just by drawing a line that starts to go up this way. Ooh, Arcadia, you got a really fancy headgear on that character, I like it. So I'm starting with a line that swoops up and I'm blocking in it kind of thicker and darker towards the bottom and letting it thin out towards the top. Oops. Then on the inside of that cup of the ear, I'm gonna add a little bit of fur. That fur in an actual animal's ear is there to protect it from things getting inside of their big ears. So we're gonna add some of that in there, just some little zigzag lines to give it that fluff. Ooh, Sophie, that's a good tip. Maybe some of you have longer haired characters and it feels weird to have long hair just kind of like coming out of this floating head. Drawing a neck and some shoulders can help a character feel a little bit more complete and then let their hair kind of like naturally flow down. After you've drawn the basic shape of the ear, going back to that, you guys, if you just have kind of like a floating ear there on the head, you might want to draw like a piece of hair or two to help show where the hair is kind of covering the base of the ear. Something that I like to do as well when I've drawn kind of like bigger pieces of hair is to add a couple of extra lines to make it look like there's just like a little bit of extra hair floating around in certain places. Make it look a little more natural, maybe a little more messy if that goes with the way your character looks. And you can also add some of those little fringes to things like the ear. ear. If your character has like maybe some coloration to it, like if it's a fox ear and there's some colors here at the end, you can scribble that into. Let's see, ooh, I see a hand raised. Uh, your character has three ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an awkward number, right? They should have four. Ta-da. Let's see, I see another hand raised. Um, I don't know if this is too much to ask right now, but could you show us how to draw Lance hair? Who's hair? Kagamine Lance hair. Oh. <laughs> it looks kind of similar to the one that I'm looking at here, actually. I would love to sneak in drawing more hairstyles, but I think that we're gonna just have enough time for me to show one or two more things before we gotta go for today. Sorry about that. Suddenly I wish we had like so much more time. <laughs> but I'll try my best to cover a couple more things. Thank you guys for hanging in there so far and drawing with me. So let me just do a couple more things before we wrap it up and I'll open up like just the last little bit for questions. All righty. Another thing that I see come up really popularly for um, when we're drawing uh, characters during Halloween is adding fun accessories like wings. Wings I feel like pop up a lot when, um, especially in like um, anime costumes, like if you see promotional art of characters for Halloween, you'll see like, bat wings or fluffy angel wings and like a whole bunch of characters will have them. I know that my character is currently a cat person, um, but why, why can't they have some uh, animal wings? I'm going to show you really quickly just how to block in a basic 
bat wing, or at least bat inspired wing, and a basic feathered wing too. I'll do them here on the sides of the character. Some of you might think of drawing kind of a bat wing in it or a dragon wing or whatever you kind of like gravitate towards too. And maybe you're just like, okay, so it's got like a thing that sticks out and another line. And then it's like kind of spiky on the bottom, boom, got a wing. Yeah, you do. That's definitely a good place to start. But I think we can get inspired by what actual um, webbed wings look like to really pump this one up. I like to start with an arc, like a curved line for the bottom part of the wing and another curved line that goes the other way, just kind of swooping out there. Then I imagine it's kind of like an umbrella where there's some lines that kind of poke out in between like this from this point right here, the little corner bend that we have. And then you connect those um, little points with the webbing that goes underneath. That makes for a nice rhythm for the wing and gives you a little bit more of that structure that we see in actual webbed wings that are out there. <laughs> Ooh, a fairy wing would have been fun too. Similar to the way that we draw this wing, the webbed wing, a feathered wing is just a little bit different. We're gonna start with that curve, just like we did before for the base of the wing. We're gonna go out and show about how long we want that wing to be with that second line. And instead of having the little bone structures that hold the webbing on this one, we're gonna imagine that there's layers of feathers where the feathers at the very tip of the wing are the longest. And the feathers that are at the very base of the wing over here are much shorter. You can block in a very light curved line that block that goes from the top to the bottom and then add feather shapes and curved lines that go one and two to the edges of it one two one two one two and you can make them smaller and smaller as you go down or whatever feels the most natural for you On the inside of this, instead of having the bony structures, you'll have layers of feathers and little scalloped curve shapes that will take up adding the details on the inside. <laughs> and now we have this very strangely costumed anime person <laughs> with four ears and two wings. Ooh, Mia, I like it. You committed to that look with the eyeliner, it looks cool. Just jumping in to say we are at 5.30. So if anyone has to go now, um, that's totally fine. But if you guys have a few more minutes, um, and Mr. Abe, you have a few more minutes, then we can stick around for, for a little bit longer. Definitely. Thank you so much for the heads up. 